Sister Midnight. And um, can I put her in my book? And then Wikipedia came into existence. <laughs> and for a little while in there, actually, there, there was a brief moment in about, you know, 2004-ish, when actually the Wikipedia entry seemed to think that probably I might possibly have created her. But then somebody else came in and around about 2006, they said, you know, gamer is getting referenced in all of these um, God things, and isn't that rather Western-centric and, and stuff, and they deleted all mention of me. And then, um, then I noticed that, that Zoria Pulmach and I was absolutely solid and real, because they found books that referred to her. Nobody actually stopped and looked at the dates on these books, which were all published after 2001. <laughs> And as far as I, and then, and then anybody else who's written books about Russian gods always, now she's in all of them. And, and I love that because I feel like I, I've done that thing that I talked about in the book. I have created a god. <laughs> and she has to be real. Uh, you know, she, she's real because she's in Wikipedia and you can find out with no mention at all of me and it's brilliant. <laughs> Now you know how the guy who invented the Hamburglar feels. Like, it's that same brought him into being. But, and look, I, I said that as a joke, but that's, isn't that how all religions are evolved and are amended? It's the creativity Somebody makes of... something up. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's, and, that's, that's, that's the joy of it. And says, and, hey, wouldn't it be cool if this happened too? And then, after a while, people just go, yeah, you know, he, he made lunch for everybody. It was pretty cool. He just, we had a bro, some fish and some bread, and then we all had lunch. It was great. I like it. I like that story. It's good. All right, give him that power. Food power. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you just did that. You just participated in the That's expansion of a religion. Yeah. I'm, I, it makes me incredibly happy to have done that. <laughs> I, but I think... I'm, you know, there, there are weird sort of echoes. I read, I, I've been doing different readings in every town, um, wherever I can, because it's, it's more fun for me that way. And in San Francisco last night, I read the Easter chapter, the one set in San Francisco in this book, and I commented on, on two things, one of which is that a lot more people now know that Easter is at least possibly um, named after a German goddess of fertility named Eostra. And, um, but one reason an awful lot more people know that now than did when I commented on this is because significantly in excess of a million people have read American Gods. So it sort of, it becomes this weird kind of meme that heads out of the society. And, and I get people now coming up to me and saying, you know, you really don't understand pagans. <laughs> and I say, well, why don't I? They say, well, you know, that thing that you do in, in American Gods where you have that scene where the girl sort of, you know, doesn't actually worship something. Well, I have my personal gods, and this and this, and I do this ritual, and I do this, and I said, that's, that's really cool. You should have talked to a lot of pagans in the 90s and had these, the same embarrassing conversations that I used to have with them, where people would say, I'm a pagan, and I would say, that's so cool, who do you worship? And they'd say, no, you don't worship. It's like an empowerment thing. It's like, you know, and, and it's a goddess thing. And I said, oh, cool, so you, you like candles to your goddess? They say, it's about discovering the goddess within. <laughs> Feeling her. And, and I go, and that sort of crept into the book. And I like the way that this, this part of me that goes, maybe it was that little paragraph that, Change things for a few people. <laughs> you must have got hit with so many crystals, dude. That must have sucked. <laughs> you must have gotten so angry, like, I'm gonna change the whole pagan thing. But if, is there a process to, if there's a process to discovering the goddess within, then that is, is a form of ritual, though, isn't it? I think that what I, what I loved about teasing people, and it really was just a tease in, in American Gods, um, was, was allowing Wednesday to say the things that I had thought 
during some of these conversations, but it never actually allowed myself to say because people would have thought I was making fun of them, and I would have been. And, um, <laughs> you know, he, he does this whole little little thing. Let me see if I can find it. It isn't the thing that we're actually going to do as a reading, which we will do soon. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> While Neil searches, here's a free vegan coconut cookie recipe. <laughs> First, get two cups of chopped coconut, preferably organic. <laughs> then, add unsalted cranberry butter. Let, oh, well, you'll get the rest of the recipe later. I think he's found it. Make sure to see Bo American God, starring Larry the Cable Guy, <laughs> Cedric the Entertainer, and David Lee Roth as the <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they're in a restaurant, and he's a coffee house in San Francisco. And uh, in talking to his... Uh, he... Uh, calls over the waiter, waitress. She said, you need another espresso? No, my dear, I was just wondering if you could solve a little argument we were having over here. My friend and I were disagreeing about what the word Easter means. Would you happen to know? The girl stared at him as if green toads had begun to push their way between his lips. <laughs> then she said, I don't know about any of that Christian stuff. I'm a pagan. <laughs> the woman behind the counter said, I think it's like Latin or something for Christ has risen, maybe? <laughs> really? said Wednesday. Yes, yeah, sure, said the woman. Easter, like the sun rises in the east, you know? <laughs> the risen sun, of course, the most logical supposition. The woman smiled and returned to her coffee grinder. Wednesday looked up at their waitress. I think I shall have another espresso if you do not mind and tell me. As a pagan, who do you worship? Worship? Uh, that's right, I imagine you must have a pretty wide open field. So to whom do you set up your household altar? To whom do you bow down? To whom do you pray at dawn and at dusk? Her lips described several shapes without saying anything before she said, the female principle. It's an empowerment thing, you know? Indeed, and this female principle of yours, does she have a name? She's the goddess within us all, said the girl with the eyebrow ring, color rising to her cheek. She doesn't need a name. <laughs> ah, said Wednesday with a wide monkey grin. So do you have mighty bacchanals in her honor? Do you drink blood wine under the full moon while scarlet candles burn in silver candle holders? Do you step naked into the sea foam, chanting ecstatically to your nameless goddess while the waves lick at your legs, lapping your thighs like the tongues of a thousand leopards? <laughs> <coughs> You're making fun of me. <laughs> she said. We don't do any of that stuff you were saying. She took a deep breath. Shadow suspected she was counting to ten. <laughs> Any more coffees here? Another mochaccino for you, ma'am? So. You know, that is a Kate Hudson film I'd like to see, The Pagan Waitress. I don't know why you don't pitch that, there's a whole... Um, you know, we should do, we actually... You want to do the... Yeah, we, we have um, our mad idea, my mad idea, wasn't Pat's. Pat is not a, a, he's been dragged into this madness by me, as has the other person we're about to bring over the stage. Um, I thought, seeing that we are, you know, in, in um, San Francisco, I read that bit, which was pretty San Francisco -y. I thought that maybe in LA, I'd do an LA bit. There really is only one good, solid L.A. E. bit in the book. And I, I thought, you know, rather than me...